Hello creative humans! Today I'm going to show you how to create my favorite non-traditional watercolors out of food coloring. Remember, with any watercolor or any painting, you only need three colors to create the entire color wheel of colors. So today I'm going to show you how to use these food colorings with just red, yellow, and blue. I also have green in there. You could use additional colors. The food coloring we're using here is gel food coloring. The liquid food coloring also works well. You just need to add a little less water to dilute it. And this is an example of what you can create using just three primary food coloring colors. Stay tuned. I only used the primary colors, so if you're not familiar with colors, the three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. With that triangle of colors, you can create the entire color wheel. So you're really not limited. And this is probably most similar to um, tube watercolors. So you can get quite a few details, um, really potent colors, nice, rich, and vibrant. So I'm gonna show you that. So we're using gel food colors. So I'm not gonna use green, I'm just gonna use uh, yellow, red, and blue. If you are a baker, which I totally am, then you know that when you add the yellow food coloring to anything, um, it appears more orange, so you're really gonna water it down uh, for you to get the full color range. So I actually use an egg tray. I don't make deviled eggs very often at all, so I purposely bought this to use as a paint palette. You can see there's still paint inside. It is my favorite alternative to a traditional paint palette. So I'm just gonna squirt a drop or so. Get this on camera, there we go. I'm just gonna squirt a drop or so in here. This one is gel, but it's not as thick as the little tiny cute containers of gel food coloring, so I think it's a tad more liquidy. So there's red. And then here is my yellow. While I was painting the little food coloring cake, um, I kept getting the yellow and the red confused because I didn't want to water them down. Okay, it's a really important whenever you are creating with watercolor. Dima's going to get me nice clean water. In my classroom I have tons of um, eye droppers. You don't have to have this, it just makes life a little bit easier when you're diluting. This is not even an eye, this is an eyedropper my mom brought over because my cat wouldn't eat. <laughs> so this was going to be our way of uh, force feeding her. But she's eating now, she's my favorite. Her name is Fatty Fatty Abby. It's really Abby, call her Abby Dabby Doo. I didn't realize it was a crazy cat lady until I had her. So I'm not mixing this in completely because I really like um, thick watercolors. That's why I prefer tube watercolors, which I'm also gonna show you how to use. As you can see, the yellow is really dark. It's more like orange, so you're really gonna water that down when you use it. From here, you can mix the entire color wheel You can watch an old episode of Barney if you don't remember what colors you mix to create your secondaries. All right. One of the biggest questions I get from students is how do I make pink? And that's really easy. All you do is red and white. Mm, yes, but with watercolors, there is no white. So, sorry. To create pink, I'm just gonna take a drop of the red and add water to it because there is no white in watercolor. And if you buy it in a store, they're liars. It's the non-purest thing to do, by the way. So I'm just watering that down. Same with like mint, you would create green and then just add a ton of water. So um, I drew all of these cuties with a book called How to Draw what is it called, Liam? How to draw? Cute How to draw cute things. Put the awe into drawing. Put the awe into drawing. 
And I'm gonna paint my, this is gonna be a little strawberry ice cream. As with all watercolors, you wanna make sure that you let things dry, be patient. I've never finished a watercoloring all in one sitting to create a light brown or a tan color for my little ice cream. Okay, so I'd kinda let that dry, paint my other little cone. So I started out with pastels, so you can see um, you can still create a nice soft range of colors. And I'll create something a little bit darker. Fill in the strawberries so you can see how dark the food coloring paint can go. Watercolors are meant to be transparent. Because this is food coloring, be careful this is more staining than traditional watercolors. If you've ever made frosting, you've got red food coloring on your hand, you know it'll be there for a little while. So just be careful in terms of cleanup. I'm okay with it blending here. I'm gonna wait for all of this to dry before I paint it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have red and blue mixing into the cake. Again, you wanna make sure you're rinsing your brush as you go, drying it off before you switch colors. That way, you're not diluting the watercolors too much. Create a little shadow just by layering the same color on top. One thing I meant to mention is you can see all these little details of the hearts, the polka dots, the little patterns. I created and added all of those on after I let this dry. So you want to make sure it's dried completely before you add any cute little details, the little thin stripes. All of that was added um, after I put my first layer of food coloring watercolor down. So the next type of non-traditional watercolors I'm going to demonstrate are acrylic watercolors. 